and good morning everyone from me. Uh, thank you the organizers for giving me the opportunity to come here after all these restrictions, the pandemic and everything. Uh, a little thing, a little uh, background about me. Uh, 16 years in the professional service industry, boring hobby, tags and, uh, and, and in a law firm. Now I'm um, specializing actually in advisory services, headquartering in family of services, uh, operating locally in EU. I'm a board member in a Korean Bank of Financial Institution in Cyprus and the chairman of the audit committee. So finance and banking sector my background. And I'm an independent also director in a GMN, a company specializing in green funds actually. And also dealing with Wiki Cyprus, which is actually a woman Indian chambers of, of commerce and industry uh, between Indian girls and Cyprus girls. So I chose I chose to uh, to start the presentation with this uh, picture. Uh, and the question is, is sustainable is sustainability and corporate social responsibility and profit can go together? Actually, corporate sustainability has become a buzzword in companies, big and small, such as McDonald's, Walmart stores, and many other corporate giants have sustainability as a key priority. In my research, when I was trying to find the, the correct definition of sustainability, actually, I like the following definition meeting our needs without compromising the ability of future generation to meet theirs. So this is what I would like to see as sustainability. Today, our roadmap for today will include actually discussion around CRS and ESG. We will move to sustainable finance, we will see the impact of business and then focus on some green investments that we can, uh, you can see and provide. So, corporate social responsibilities. Companies are under pressure to deliver goods and services in a sustainable manner. And I say under pressure, why I'm using this word? Because uh, due to the stakeholders, the investors, the, community, the consumers, and uh, the, of course the financial institutions, companies need to deliver their goods and services in a sustainable manner. What's the major difference? ESG, CS, and CSR, both are the same thing. Are the company's impact on society and environment. The major difference actually is that corporate social responsibility is how the companies are, are doing their strategy to meet the environment, their environmental targets and their strategy and their uh, impact on society targets. ESG are actually are the criteria that the investor use to assess their company, if a company uh, can determine if they are worth investing in. So ESG is environmental, so how it considers how you use your carbon fruit footprint or your wasting practices. Social responsibility consists of practices that benefit the company's employees, consumers, and the wider community, and governance mainly refers to maintaining uh, an honest and transparent accounting policies and regulatory compliance. Mm -hmm. And government, actually these three, uh, these three words, these three pillars, are informally referred as to people, planet, and profits. Sustainability are first of all the profits and then the, the impact in the other in the environmental uh, and, uh, and governments. So, Sustainability encompasses an entire, uh, entire supply chain of a business, requiring accountability from the primary level through the suppliers all the way to the retailers. If producing something sustainable becomes a competitive edge for supply multinational corporation. However, this, uh, this scenario depends on how strongly corporations embrace sustainability and whether this is a true change of direction direction or just greenwash. I highlight that word we are going to touch base in a bit about, uh, about greenwash. So, why all the fuss? The main question for investors and executives is whether or not sustainability is an advantage to the company. 
Studies suggest that more environmental minded firms offer better returns. So the first pillar, here is the profitability. In order to be sustainable, you need first to be profitable, of course. I will stand here and say that uh, sustainability means a company to be profitable, compliant, transparent, with proper corporate governance, and the key word is proper risk management. So, between, let's see some numbers to see the second pillar, which is sustainable finance. Between 2000, oops. can you please? So, between 2016 and 2018, sustainable, responsible, and impact investing grew at more 80%. Rising from 8.8 trillion back in 2016 to 12 trillion in 2018. So there is a pressure for sustainable finance. Also, there is a regulatory pressure, pressure to change from international initiatives such as UN Sustainable Development Goals, EU regulations. We have now taxonomy and the regulations for the reporting and national level regulation. Most important, though, is the general rise in sustainability awareness, the consumers, the stakeholder values. The investors are looking not only for profitable organization, but the impact in the society. Also, uh, most of the investors are asking three questions. Why I need to invest in that? I mean, what's the, the interest rate that I will take back? What's the return of my investment? The second question is, what's the security I'm getting uh, in my investment? In a project, and the first question is the availability. The second, uh, the, the, the new question the investor needs to ask is that what I am supporting with my money. So, from EU perspective, because I come from a, a new country, uh, the European Union strongly supports the transition to a low carbon, of course, more recourse sufficient. That's why it has. Uh, has commit uh, the targets for 2030 and reach the objective of a European Green Deal, which is vital that we all direct investment towards sustainable projects and activities. Of course, this uh, direction also comes from uh, from the US. So uh, the need now with the COVID pandemic has been there has been forced to direct our money to sustainable projects in order to make our economies business and societies, and particularly the health systems, of course, more resilient to change, to climate change and environmental change. So, sustainable finance. I will just say that World Bank had led the initiative by providing help to the regulators to bring their finance system. So as you can appreciate, sustainable finance it's very popular in the nowadays in the financial institutions since they are redirected to reorientation of the capital of sustainable investments. This has been led not only from the World Bank, but it has been led back from the, the financial institution, the asset managers, and the independent investors. I, I can state here that Big Day has a, a department investing only in sustainable finance, in sustainable, sorry, in sustainable investments. Uh, it has uh, a whole team dedicated uh, using analytics and data. And this is the, the difficulty actually to, to measure these non-financial uh, uh, disclosures and, uh, and, and the impact. Uh, and uh, and it, uh, it, it, has, it is dedicated only in sustainable investments. So, the good thing in sustainable finance, except from going green and the impact of the impact of the environment, is the promotion of transparency actually, and sustainability in financial as well and financial activities. How is it measured? Before I say how it is measured, I want to state the importance. Why this is important? You can see the company in the rules, not only the outside. Okay, you can see the final and profit the margins. We can see uh, the bid down or whatever the, the, the financial due diligence we are seeing. We have but with the with sustainability. We can also see the, the a company's uh, vision. A 
Afghan is a mission. And this is very important because it can understand the risks and the problems that may happen in communities. For example, uh, gold mines, if they are not treated well with the, with the community, maybe it's hard to get the mining uh, license. See, this is a, a small example. So, or if they have problems with their employee, how you, how an investor can know uh, that a company has problems? Or what are the employees' policies? All these measures and all these uh, uh, data can be now available, and and can uh, and can and it should be disclosed actually. So it minimizes your financial risk actually. Uh, that is. Uh, uh, researchers have developed some techniques to help investors collect this data. So, for US, there is Domini for hundred social index that can measure the green companies, and also in Europe, most popular are the Dow Jones Sustainability and the Fortune Report. So, when you are investing, you need also to check the, the, those indexes if are available. What are the challenges? Of course, this is a very, very complex area. Why is that? Because you have a non-financial impact, and how that, that is, is measured, and you need to have specialists of, uh, uh, of analyzing this data, so the incorporation of the ESG factor into the asset selection and risk management policies re uh, requires relevant expertise and uh, data availability. Companies may be reluctant to understand their social environmental responsibility and the relevance of the ESG factors. So in addition to that, fund managers may not be able to appreciate the impact in their long-term performance. So there's due to lack of clarity and consensus though around the measurement and the regulation of the ESG, this has uh, uh, has in, uh, invariably led to incidents of greenwashing, the word I, I used in previous of that slide. What is greenwashing? If you search in the Google actually, the first, uh, the first picture you will see is the following. Greenwashing is when you, 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 you give the false impression or misleading information about your, how your products are environmental sound. A clinical actually example back then, because now it has been changed, uh, it has to do with Coca-Cola. Uh, and Coca-Cola did Coca-Cola Life that promoted that this was a very healthy drink. Uh, of course, that included 6.0% sugar, but this was far away from a healthy drink, so probably get less life if you try a lot of it. So, uh, uh, this is, uh, of course, this has been changed. So, the green label needs to is changed. Also, Philip Morris, I remember, I saw an article of, uh, of having the, the green sustainability. So, the outcome for, from this that I want to remember, actually, the key outcome is that investor needs to go deep to the company to understand exactly what the company is doing, the corporate governance, the vision, the mission, to dig inside the company and not just see the, the, the profits and the bidders, etc. Of course, you need to see that the finance person. The impact on business in numbers. Let's see some numbers. Except the brand value and the competitive advantage you have, the goodwill of the company, the good impression. Uh, we, you, need, you need also the consumer demands. Nielsen studies show that 60% of the consumers would spend more for a product if it came from a sustainable brand, and 81% of the global consumers feel strongly that companies should help improve the environment. Increase efficiency. Actually, according to studies, a sustainable strategy can reduce costs substantially and can affect operating profits as much as 60% less. Attract talent. Millennials now will uh, go to a job because of the company's sustainability. Back when I my, my first job, I just saw the salary. I mean, I, I wouldn't uh, care about sustainability. But 
this is a new generation, we're talking about the millennials, generation Z, create new opportunities. Uh, with, uh, with green, you can have access to new market, to new products, and also, of course, access to finance. So, I know green means some effort. Okay, it may need a significant initial investment. It can be time consuming, with time consuming with other products. If you might have to inform and educate yourself. Organic products are more expensive. Uh, we have all these costly disclosures about the environmental matters and the bribery, etc. Et but let's see the significance of the impact of the investment by some statistics. In 2019, Dow has invested nearly 2 billion in improving resource efficiency and has saved almost 10, so five, uh, times 5. In 2013, General Electric reduced greenhouse gas emissions by 32% uh, percent and water by 45 and has uh, resulted in 3 million, uh, 300 million savings. So you can appreciate that this, uh, this slide gives you uh, in money what the impact of a, a sustainable business is. So, our fund, what does it do? Some of the investments. These are the green, this uh, the first fund is a, a combination of four funds actually. Uh, one is operating in Greece and in Bulgaria, so in you, with a total investment of 33.5 million. Uh, the one is, uh, as I said, already operating and the three are under uh, construction. This is a hydroelectric project, it includes hydroelectric projects, photovoltaic projects, and the, with these numbers, the EBITDA of the project is 2.5 to 2.7% the total EBITDA of the farm, which gives you a, a great return of 8%. This is the beauty of the green funds. You can see revenue is almost near to the EBITDA. Another investment in shipping now. Uh, we are engaged to invest in air drive carrier actually, eco type of course, uh, with the highest possible degree of global emission standards and the upcoming green decarbonization. What you can do here is secure your investment through a double triple A rating counterparty. You have a charter period of five years and the estimated repayment of capital can go up to 1.5 years. The estimated return on your current index price is more than 30%. So you can see uh, examples of investment, of green investment, giving you very, very high return. To go into the cash flows, etc. And the last uh, part that we are currently building up now it's a huge investment in wind farm in Bulgaria. This, uh, this project uh, is 400 megawatts in Bulgaria that could expand it to reach this capacity requested. The project will be connected in an existing power substation. There are all the permits in. Etc. Et what I want you to see is that the anticipated return of your equity is 18%, which is something uh, for me amazing. So, let's conclude everything. Thank you.
around three billion dollars is blocked in the ESG funds in Russia, and right now they're not tradable. So uh, many investors were debating whether it is wise to withdraw their funds or to keep it and see what happens after the war. Just want to understand your take on that. Okay, this is a, a thank you. Your name? My name is Anudeep. Okay, nice to meet you. So this is my personal opinion. Okay, uh, when you have a stable doesn't give you the opportunities that uh, a turbulence uh, that will give you. For example, shipping industry now is booming due to the war. I'm not saying that the war has to be correct politically. Yeah, I'm not saying that this is a good thing, but uh, we need to do, uh, adapt ourselves in that situation. So uh, my personal view is that to not even
you think there is a place available for ESG products related to digital assets using renewable energy to mine digital assets, for instance? So, a, a very nice question, actually. So, digital assets and uh, how this digital asset can form in the, in the equation of getting, for example, sustainable finance. This is the, uh, this is the first uh, question. Uh, this relationship actually has not been uh, uh, quantified. Uh, so it, it depends on what the digital assets are, are uh, we are talking about tangible assets for the moment, I mean uh, about wind farm, renewable energy, etc, etc. But, uh, of course, if you prove that this digital, the, the, the impact of the digital assets to the environment, to the society, the transparency of the corporate governance that this company is doing a good impact. It doesn't have to do only with the uh, uh, renewable energy. It has to do with everything. So if the mission, the vision of the company is uh, it's there and you can uh, uh, prove that these uh, this investments, these digital assets are actually impacting in a very good way, maybe giving back to the community uh, with scholarships or uh, I can think 1,000, 1 million things that you can do your digital asset have a very good input to the economy. It doesn't, uh, doesn't only need to be, okay, I'm planting trees and I'm uh, saving the planet. It's not only the, the, the subject is huge. I mean, uh, oh, as I know, uh, three of the Nespresso and uh, Another three companies, three very big companies, are now engaged to uh, to doing rainforests, for example. Okay, this is another thing. But uh, you can say you can have one million uh, uh, things that you can do with doing the digital assets becoming green. Sustainability in 
media can go uh, in other countries that provide this initiative. 